2022 is finally here. Thank God, to be honest, 2021 was just a continuation of 2020, and we all remember how bad that year was, don't we? Let's start with President Biden, shall we? Old Joe, America's creepy, demented uncle, took over in January. By that time, Congress was busy trying to convince us all that the Democratic Party held a clear majority and that protests on January 6th were an insurrection. But we'll get to them soon enough. Over the last year, Joe started by canceling many leases and permits for the energy industry, acted surprised to see a massive increase in energy prices, blamed the pandemic for those spikes, claimed that they were a sign of how healthy our economy was, met with world leaders to expand America's commitment to offset Asia's carbon footprint, and finally, just after making those commitments, quietly reversed course and issued more permits to the energy industry. To the media, that might seem like coherent energy policy. But to me, it seems like someone who does not know what they are doing, acting precipitously, and then swiftly regretting their action. Not that the regret does much good, since energy prices are a principal driving force behind all other prices, including the cost of producing green energy. It's a simple principle. Transportation runs on fossil fuels, so increases in the price of fuel at the pump translate to increases in the prices of all goods and prompt increases in the prices of services. In plain English, canceling those permits and leases prompted significant inflation over the last year. Joe has claimed success for the increase in overall wages over the last year. He's also claimed success for the decrease in unemployment. Allow me to disabuse those notions. Wages went up because people returning from pandemic spawn surges in government transfer payments demanded more money for the same work that they did before the pandemic just to come back. Unemployment went down because some states relaxed restrictions and industries in those states which were idling during the lockdowns cranked back into production. But labor force participation is still not back where it was before the world spent 2020 at home. And the cost of labor has increased enough that we really can't expect participation to return to former levels. It's just another round of what President Obama told us about a decade ago. Those jobs are just gone, according to the government. Never mind that they were coming back under the intervening president, folks. That was just a false start. And you know it's true, because old Joe says so. At least we have those wage increases. Oh, wait, that's right. Inflation has completely absorbed wage growth. Most Americans are no better off than they were before the pandemic financially, because just like I predicted before when discussing minimum wage increases, general increases in inflation absorb general increases in wages. Generally speaking, of course. Congress is doing everything that they can do to help us, though. Meaning, in this instance, next to nothing. That overwhelming majority in the House is just nine more Democrats than Republicans. If just ten moderate Democrats decide that a bill is not right for America, then that bill will die in the House. In the Senate, the margin is down to the vice president's tie-breaking vote. And that only because two independent senators caucus with the Democrats. As far as absolute political party membership folks, there are actually two more Republican senators than Democratic senators, which means that just one moderate Democrat can kill a bill. Naturally, there are two moderate Democrats in the Senate who do not support the progressive agenda. And, naturally, the lack of progress in Congress is blamed on those two people thwarting the will of 330 million others, at least according to the major media outlets. Honestly, every bit of success which Americans enjoyed in 2021 was thanks to state governors and state legislatures. Of course, results may vary. Some states have resumed a semblance of normal life, and some states are still telling their residents to hide inside and wait for the federal government to save them. Oops, Joe just told us all that it is not the federal government's job to save us. Never mind all those pie-in-the-sky promises from 2020 election season when everything was Trump's fault. That is the real story of 2021. 2020 sucked, and it was all Trump's fault, and therefore everything bad that happened in 2021 
was also Trump's fault. It's not because Joe calls lids on press access in time for his daily naps. It's not because Nancy could not keep the squad from seizing the agenda in the House. It's not because Chuck could not convince all 48 Democratic senators to vote the way he said to vote. Nope. It's either all the fault of Trump's policies or it's because of the pandemic, which in turn was also Trump's fault because he did not make it stop spreading while it was still in China. Amazing how someone can simultaneously be Superman and supremely incompetent. One might even conclude that Trump did not stand a chance with the Democratic Party leaders and their media talking head lapdogs. Or should that be the media talking heads and their Democratic Party leader lapdogs? But, hey, 2021 is over. It's finally 2022, and Americans now have their best chance to respond to that incoherent narrative from our incompetent leaders. That's right, the midterms are in November, folks. Might I suggest that we send the only message that Washington seems to understand to these progressively-minded do-nothings and elect some replacements for their offices instead? Because there's a bunch of folks in Washington who really, really need to retire from public office. Good luck in 2022, folks.